This is my roommate, Rai. He's rather jumpy. No, it's just... What the... <laughs> That's your own shadow, man. You just... <laughs> you just scared yourself with your own shadow. <laughs> Hey everybody, Derek here. Every person has a few games that they would love their friends to play, and they always recommend their friends to play them no matter how old the games are. Fear is one of these games. I've had so many of my friends play this game. I adore it. But a lot of people don't talk about Extraction Point, Fear's first expansion, and I believe Extraction Point is the height and true end to Fear's story and gameplay. If I can, I will force my friends to play Fear. In my opinion, it's one of the best shooters of all time. I love the base game. But again, not enough people talk about Extraction Point. So the focus of this video is going to be Extraction Point, but let's go over the base game to talk about why it's so good to begin with. Unfortunately, Extraction Point is not considered canon by Warner Brothers, who owns the Fear franchise, but at the same time, Fear 2 was nowhere near as good as the first game, and Fear 3 isn't even a Fear game, so who the fuck cares? Extraction Point is what I consider to be the true end to the Fear franchise both its height in gameplay and story. But first, let's talk about the base game before I go into the expansion. Oh, also, there's going to be spoilers in this video. If you don't want spoilers, I would recommend clicking away now because there's going to be some big ones. Originally, it only released on PC. It was an awkward in-between console generations time, it was too powerful for the original Xbox, so they delayed it to release a full package with Fear and its expansions on Xbox 360 that ultimately wasn't anywhere near as good as the PC version. If you're playing Fear, I highly recommend you play this on PC, don't bother with the 360 version. The 360 version stutters at times, the controls feel very awkward, and jump kicking just doesn't seem to work, so if you want to play this game, again, play on PC. You can get it on Steam pretty easily. At least, that's what I usually would be able to say, but this is not one of those cases. For whatever reason, you can't buy Fear on Steam without buying the complete Fear Pack. And considering how much worse Fear 2 is compared to the original game, and that Fear 3 just isn't a Fear game, I wouldn't bother. I would only recommend playing Fear and Extraction Point. The better alternative is to go buy the Fear Platinum Edition on GOG, which will also give you both expansions. You can play Perseus Mandate if you want to, but it's really not that great. Anyway, for a game that came out 15 years ago, Fear has aged gracefully. It was by far one of the best looking games of 2005, if not the best looking game of 2005, and really doesn't look that bad now. All its effects still hold up. Dust flying everywhere, the slow motion mechanics, big chunks being taken out of walls, the shockwave from grenades, all of it has this spectacle that looks nice today. The gameplay has aged even better. I would argue the combat in this game is better than vast majority of games that come out today. The one thing I can say might be slightly dated are the horror segments, but I can still defend those and I think they definitely aren't dated when it comes to Extraction Point. Okay, so in Fear you play as a character simply known as Point Man. Point Man is a part of Delta Squad and the Fear Task Group. Fear stands for First Encounter Assault Recon. Fear effectively deals with paranormal activities. Your character has ridiculous reflexes, which is how they play out the fact that you can suddenly turn everything into slow motion. Honestly, that's fine, because the slow motion in this game is awesome. There is a hell of a lot more lore than just you have really good reflexes, but I'm not going into that in this video. The main antagonists of this game are Alma and Paxton Fettel. Alma being the spooky ghost girl you see throughout the game, and Paxton Fettel being the soldier you see walking around in a leather jacket. Paxton Fettel can telepathically control replica soldiers. This is the result of a very messed up experiment from Armacam Technology. The experiment, as you can assume, was on Alma, and Paxton is Alma's son. As it turns out, Paxton is your brother, you're also the son of Alma, and this explains all of your super slow-mo abilities. You were still trying to stop all of this nonsense, so in desperation you blew up the entire Origin facility, which effectively acted like a nuke. After this explosion, you were saved by a helicopter, you start flying away, Alma takes it down, the game ends. This is where Extraction Point starts. It's a direct sequel to the base game. Now that I've explained all of this, let me explain what Fear did so well. The first thing is the combat. Everything is flawless when it comes to the combat in this game. It's got a great mixture of guns, melee, and grenades, but it takes all of this to the extreme. As Monolith themselves said, this game was heavily inspired by John Woo films. Every gun you shoot has an exaggerated, over-the-top effect. 
Sure, it's loud and it's punchy, but the guns do more than that. In the middle of a gunfight, there's going to be papers flying everywhere, dust flying off the walls, huge chunks of the walls missing, blood all over the place. Grenades have a massive over-the-top shockwave coming out of them. The combat is pure controlled chaos, and it feels as satisfying as you could make it. You have a wide variety of weapons ranging from pistols to SMGs to assault rifles to the ever-amazing shotgun, which might just be the best shotgun in all of first-person shooter history. This thing literally turns people into a misty cloud of blood. Then you have other things like the particle weapon that literally turns people into skeletons. And the weapon variety is just awesome. Get it. Get it. <laughs> Next you get to the melee, and they can't just give you a regular melee attack, that'd be way too boring. Instead you have the regular melee attack, a roundhouse melee attack, a jump kick melee attack, and a slide kick melee attack. These are very effective and will kill all units in the game, aside from the heavies, in one kick. Next up are the grenades. They're round, they roll easily, they're easy to make off walls, and they're contact grenades. I said the shotgun might be the best shotgun in all of first person shooter history, but there's no question about this one, these grenades are by far the best grenades out of any shooter ever made. Yes, even compared to Halo 1's nuke grenades, I would much rather have fear grenades. And you also have some other alternative options too, like a landmine and some sticky remote bombs. But as nice as all of this stuff is, it won't turn a good shooter into a great shooter. What does that is the map design and the AI. Fear is a linear game, but every time you get into a combat encounter, it's like you have a multiplayer map to explore and to flank enemies. It's never really just shooting down a hallway. There are many different routes you can go, and many routes for the enemy AI to go. The AI in Fear is something that shines above all else, and it's kind of sad because AI has not been pushed over the years, and Fear I still look at as kind of the holy grail of AI. When you are fighting these enemies, it doesn't feel like you're fighting AI, and that's really nice in a change of pace. They're not going to mindlessly run at you and shoot you. Instead, they're going to send one of their units out to you while the other one gives them cover. Instead, they're going to try to actively flank you. And all all the time while they're doing this, they're going to be talking to each other. For example, if there's only one left, you were going to hear him say that he needs reinforcements or just, I need help. There's a ridiculous amount of these calls they can give each other, and they all give the player an extra amount of information that they might need in that combat scenario. Now I can't begin to describe how good Fear's AI is. There's even an MIT article written about Fear's AI that I would recommend you read. It's incredibly advanced for what it is, and especially that the game came out in 2005. Now let's move on to the horror. This is what I said hadn't aged as gracefully as the combat, but at the same time it has, and let me explain. Fear's horror segments are very good and well polished, the problem is they're very scripted, so they'll only work the first or second time you play them and then you'll know exactly what's going to happen. Fear's horror for the most part is not dynamic. With that said, Fear's horror is going to get you no matter who you are. I don't care if you're going to leave a tough guy comment down below saying, oh it's not scary, you're a bunch of pussies it's going to get you at some point or another. Now, I am not very entertaining to watch when it comes to horror games. My response to horror popping up in front of me is to stop and assess the situation and then move on. That's not entertaining compared to someone freaking out. On top of that, I have played Fear and Extraction Point so many times I know exactly what's going to happen, so it just is lost on me anyway. But as I've said, I've forced my friends to play these games all the time, and I have quite a few clips of them playing the game, so trust me, you, you got some good stuff here. Let's bring up two examples of some good scripted horror segments in the original Fear. Okay. Jesus. Alright, you can stop now. <laughs> they all deserve to die. God damn it. If you played Fear, you remember this part. You automatically know when you walk in that room that something isn't right, and that's the first thing Fear does well. Its atmosphere is incredibly immersive. But the more important part of this is the fact that this happens right at the beginning of the game, and then they never mess with you on any ladder for the rest of the game. You are terrified of ladders, but it just doesn't happen again. The fact that they throw this in at the beginning of the game is just so mean. I want to go back in the water. Oh god! Jesus! <laughs> I want to go back in the water. 
So aren't you glad you're playing this game? No, you're an <laughs> asshole. This one is a perfect example. Yeah, you may laugh and go, oh no, a skeleton popped out, how spooky, but that's not the point of this horror section. At the beginning, you're already forced to jump down into water, which someone doesn't want to do to begin with in any video game ever, whether it's horror related or not, and you can't see what's down there. When you do land, you're shifted into this alternate reality, you don't know what the hell is actually going on, you're waist deep in a blood-filled hallway, you can't move very well, it's almost all in slow motion and you're partially limited in what you can do because of that blood, and there's only one light source at the end of the hallway. Your entire attention is directed towards that light source, that window. You can see vaguely what's going on behind it. You recognize it, that's the doctor that you've seen in the game before, you've never gotten a clear viewing of him, but he's there something suspicious to look at, so while your entire attention is focused on that, something else pops out and gets you. But the reason I say Fierce Horror didn't age well is because the entire point of the horror is just to break up the shooting. It's a pacing mechanic. Most other shooters would have put a puzzle in here, they put horror here, and because of that the horror segments are incredibly short. They're gone just as fast as they came. The game will frequently go from a big combat encounter to one hallway of there being horror to suddenly hearing replica soldiers again and that entire horror mechanic from one doorway to the next is gone. You're completely at ease the moment you hear those replica soldiers. So most of fear is just pure combat with a little bit of horror sprinkled in and that's what I think really hurts it. They never really fully commit to the horror despite the fact that all the elements they need for a great horror game are there. And I don't even think of being scripted is necessarily a bad thing because everyone plays it for the first time at some point. So that's what made fear so good. Amazing graphics, amazing effects, amazing combat, amazing atmosphere, and a good place to start with horror. So what could Extraction Point do to make this even better? For starters, Extraction Point addressed the biggest problem people had with fear, and that was that it all looked the same. You were either around machinery, in offices, or in a construction site. For such good combat, I can forget this, but to the more casual player, they're gonna start feeling like the game is too repetitive just because it looks the same all the way through. This is not the case with Extraction Point. You were going to see a lot of different environments in this game. These environments range from a church to an abandoned hospital, and they all look just as good as the base game. There's tons of attention to detail, and the lighting is just as good as the base game, which is a lot more than what I can say about Perseus Mandate. Man, I don't know what they did here, but Perseus Mandate just looks ugly. Anyway, back to Extraction Point. As I said, this game starts right at the end of the original Fear. As soon as you start this game, the atmosphere is oppressive. The whole city you're in is in ruin. That explosion destroyed the city. The only contact you have is with your other Delta Force operators, Holiday and Jin. There is no other contact, and the whole point of the game is to get to that extraction point. If there's one word I can use to describe how it feels trying to get to that extraction point, it's hopeless. Now for the first half of this expansion, it feels relatively the same as the base game. The combat has seen a notch up, but there's more enemies and it's a little bit more intense, but for the most part, the pacing is the same. You occasionally run into horror segments, but overall you're mostly just shooting replica soldiers. The horror segments are extremely well done, keep in mind, but they're usually pretty brief. That is, until you get to Holiday's death. And to no one's surprise, the black guy dies first. This death is gruesome. He's brutally killed by these ghost things, you have no idea what's going on, and you're helpless to stop it. I can understand if you can sort of laugh at this, I mean he's being tossed around the room like a ragdoll, his bones are being broken, and then he's just turned into blood. But the main thing about this is that this game makes a point to make you know that you can't stop this, his death is inevitable. And now your shift goes to Jin, who is your only contact left. Unlike Holiday, Jin isn't with you. She's in the city, she's going to the extraction point, but you're separated. So the second half of this expansion is just trying to regroup with Jin. Even if you're not afraid of dying yourself, this puts you in a bit of a rush because now you know what can happen to her. She can die the same way that Holiday did. And moments like this don't help. I made it. I'm at the hospital. Oh god. They're dead. They're all dead. You're not coming, are you? I'm going to die here alone. I don't want to die with them. That extraction point you're trying to get to for the entire expansion? She just tells you everyone is dead. It's abandoned. You're all that's left. And then after that, she tells you she doesn't want to die alone. There is a very specific theme to this expansion, and that theme is you're fucked. Do you remember those creepy ninja assassins in the base game? Well, Extraction Point managed to take this idea and make an enemy even worse than these. The door's open. What? 
What the? Oh! <laughs> All right, listen. Those things are scary as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the fucking automatic door scared you. It sounded like those things. Oh, that's not to say they didn't use the ninja assassins too. They definitely used those in arguably much better ways than the base game. The person you're about to see is my friend Terry. She's rather notorious for giggling. She's always giggling. It's kind of her coping mechanism. But even I haven't seen her break quite like this before. Remember when I said the base game is mostly just a bunch of combat with a few short horror segments thrown in for pacing? Well, Extraction Point does the complete opposite on the second half of the game. You had plenty of combat throughout the first half, but once you get to this hospital, this dark, abandoned hospital where everyone's dead, it's almost all horror. Now it's the other way around. It's horror with a few combat sections for pacing. Yeah, a hospital setting may sound cliche, but the atmosphere in this hospital is incredibly thick. This hospital is the sole reason why I want people to play the Fear franchise. The combat is great, it's fun, it's awesome and all of that, and I really love it. But this hospital is done so damn well. If you pay attention, there's so many minor details in this area. Like for example, during one of those crazy Fear acid trips, you'll see characters that have died before in the base game trapped in cells. Am I nearing the end? Is that why I'm going through sequences like this? It's a lie. I just picked up a signal. If you can hear me, get to high ground. A chopper is standing by. The first time you play this game, you have no idea how fucking happy you are to hear that music and everything being back to normal. <laughs> I know, right? Like, <laughs> you do not know how much of a sigh of relief that was. I can't begin to describe the relief of what it feels like when this particular section ends. Oh, and I forgot to mention you were too slow and Jin did end up dying in the same horrible way that Holiday did. You don't see it, but you know what's happening. You can hear her dying just in the other room. By the time you get there, she's dead. So it's relieving that the horror segment is over, but at the same time, you have no contact. You're just trying to survive. That is until you go up the elevator and finally get contact from the main fear lead. The guy you see at the very beginning of the original base game. Finally, someone to talk to. You have one final big climactic fight, and then after that, the helicopter explodes. <laughs> tried to bury their sins, but instead planted the seeds of their doom. They will die. <laughs> All of them. This is the end to Extraction Point, and in my mind, the end to the Fear franchise. It's the best ending we could have gotten for a game like Fear. Fear was never about a happy ending, it was about an unethical, terrible experiment 
that caused suffering upon hundreds. It eventually led to a nuke, and the entire city is now in ruin. The bad guys won because of your fuck-ups. The entire game feels oppressive. There's no way you could have a good ending here. What's more impressive is that this expansion wasn't even made by Monolith. It was made by Timegate Studios. They outsourced what I consider to be the best release in Fear history. I choose to ignore them saying Extraction Point isn't canon. This is a way better ending than what we got in Fear 2 or Fear 3. Again, Fear is not happy. It never has been. This is the worst ending possible. But for once in this situation, the worst ending possible is the best ending possible. There's still a lot more about this game I could talk about, but just trust me and play it yourself if you haven't. If you listen through all these spoilers for whatever reason without playing it, it's really, really good. That's all I really have to talk about. Again, a huge thanks goes to my sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Check the link down below in the video information to get the game for free if you wish to do so. Hey, I also stream all the time over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jarek for Gaming Dragon. If you subscribe, you'll be able to see my videos one day ahead of time. Same thing for my patrons over on patreon.com slash Jarek4. Thank all of you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.